Okay, so in this series of videos, I'm going to look at our different types of transformations. Um, there are four different types of transformations, reflections, rotations, translations and enlargements. And today we're going to start off with um, how we tackle questions involving reflections. You also need to be able to recognise uh, what type of transformation that you may be looking at and how to describe it. So we'll also uh, do a video covering that as well. So in terms of reflections, um, before we get stuck into the reflection type questions themselves, I'm going to do a quick recap on how we plot horizontal and vertical lines uh, using an X, uh, Y axis. Uh, and you'll see why later uh, that it's important that you know how to do that. Okay, so um, there is a previous video on how to do this, but uh, we'll go through this very quickly. So uh, we're going to plot these different lines. So X equals 2, Y equals 3. And so on. Um, if we're given an x, y axis and we're asked to plot the line um, x equals 2, for example, make sure you're doing any of these types of questions as well, uh, involving drawing anything on a grid that you use a pencil. Um, when we're drawing something like x equals 2, we go to the x axis. Remember, x is the axis goes across the way, and if you're given the grid, it should be labeled anyway. So we go to where x is 2, and that is where our line is going to be drawn perpendicular to the axis. Now, I'm going to have to do this with the ruler. That's another thing that's important that uh, within the exam, if you're drawing anything um, and you need to use a ruler, of course, use a ruler. Okay, so I can't use a ruler on this occasion because I'm holding the phone to record with my left hand, um, but just keep that in mind, all right? So that is the line x equals two. So if it's a line x equals something, it will give us a vertical line, despite the x axis itself, of course, being horizontal. Um, the second one we're being asked to plot is the line y equals 3. So similarly, we just go to the y-axis in this instance, find where y is 3, and it'll be a perpendicular, a line that is perpendicular to the y-axis going across the way. So that is the line y equals 3, okay? And I'm labeling these as I go along also. It's good practice to do that. Um, the third one, we're going to draw the line x equals 1. So again, I'm back to my x-axis. I'll find... So it's x minus 1. So we're going to find on the x-axis where it's minus 1. And a perpendicular line to the x-axis here. At the point where x is minus 1. So that line there is the line x equals minus 1. Okay. Uh, and the last of these is y equals minus 4. So back to the y-axis now. There's where y is minus 4. So it will be a line that goes across the way at minus four, okay? So that's y equals minus four. A couple of other things just to uh, take note of. Uh, the x-axis itself, because we can be asked to reflect in the x-axis, uh, has the equation y equals zero, and the y-axis uh, has the equation x equals zero, okay? That might sound a bit confusing, but if you think about it, when we were doing x equals two, for example, well, there's x equals two, it's that line there, if I was to do x equals 0, there is where x is 0, and it's perpendicular to the x-axis, which of course is the y-axis, and it's the other way about with the y-axis where x equals 0, okay? Diagonal lines, x equals y or y equals x, I'm also going to show you how to do these, um, because we will look at a question involving a diagonal reflection, okay? So the line x equals y or y equals x um, goes through each of these points here, because when x is 1, y is 1, when x is 2, y is 2, hence x equals y or y equals x. So it'll be a diagonal line going this way, okay? And that's something you could be asked to plot. Um, we will also, of course, look, and I have looked at previously, plotting straight line graphs, um, but that will, we'll treat that as a separate topic for now. Um, also, the line x equals minus y or y equals minus x, same sort of thing. Um, this is a diagonal line that goes this way. Okay. All right. So this line going that direction is y equals x. This going this way is y equals minus x. Okay. So just keep an eye for that. And that is a quick recap on how we plot uh, horizontal and vertical lines, and I've also added in those two diagonal lines as well. So, 
back to looking at the questions involving reflections. So the most basic types um, type of questions that uh, involve reflections uh, is where you're you're given the mirror line, you're given the shape, and you're quite simply asked to reflect the shape in the mirror line. So reflect shape A in the mirror line. Okay, so this red line is our mirror line. Now, what I do is I reflect uh, each corner of the shape at a time and I join them up as I go. So how I do that is I count the distance of the point from the mirror line. So this point here is one, two away from the mirror line. So I go two the opposite way, one, two, and that is where that point is reflected. And I do that for each point. This is also two away, so I'm going two this way. You can rub these lines out afterwards if you want, but you wouldn't be penalizing the exam if you left them in anyway. Two, three, four, this bottom point is four away. One, two, three, four, and that's where that point ends up there. I generally, although I haven't done it here, uh, done it here uh, join them up as I go. Again, I haven't done that because I would usually do it with a ruler and I've been using my left hand to record, okay? So there we go, we end up with this shape and it is inverted and that's generally how you can tell the reflection. It says shape has been flipped over and it's pointing the other way, all right? So this, um, is a reflection in a vertical line. We'll now look at a reflection in a horizontal line. And also, a wee added thing just to keep an eye out for is when the shape that you're given to reflect crosses the mirror line. So, just to cover that base also. So, reflect shape B in the mirror line. So, same sort of thing again. We always count perpendicular. You can turn the page if it helps, whatever works for you. It doesn't really make a difference. So, you can turn it that way if you prefer. Uh, we always count perpendicular, so at a right angle, from the mirror line. All right, so if I'm counting this point, I'm going one, two, that's two away, so I go two the opposite direction. So once you've counted how far it is away from the mirror line, you go two the opposite direction from the mirror line. Um, similarly, it doesn't really matter what point we do next. This is one away, so I can go one this way. And again, just to show you the idea that I would kind of join them up as I go. And again, preferably using a ruler. All right. Now, the difference with this point is it's on the opposite side. It's on the left-hand side here of uh, our mirror line. It's one away from the mirror line. We just go one the opposite direction. And you don't have to worry about crossing your lines over the mirror line. Okay. Let me just join all our points up. And there we have our reflected shape. The two shapes overlap, but that's fine. That's what, uh, that's what we would expect to get, okay? Now, what you will probably more commonly be asked is to reflect um, shapes. We're given an X, Y axis and we're asked to also draw the mirror line. So in this case, we're asked, asked to reflect shape C in the line X equals one. Okay, so like we did over here, we're gonna start off by drawing our mirror line first. So X equals one is our mirror line. So there's X, there's one, and if you remember, we then draw on a line up at x equals 1. So that's the line x equals 1. Okay, now we have our mirror line. And all we do is, same as what we were doing above, we count the distance of each point of the shape from the mirror line. So this point, for example, here is 1 away, so I go 1 this way. Another thing people worry about is plotting on the axes or drawing over the numbers. And see, as soon as you, you've drawn the mirror line, ignore the axes, ignore the numbers and just plot uh, wherever you need to plot uh, on the squares, all right? This point here is one, two, three away. So I'm going one, two, three, the other way. Turn them up as I go, all right? Uh, and then lastly, just our top point, one, two, three, four. So I'm going one, two, three, four, the opposite side from my mirror line. And I'll just join those that point up with the other two. Okay, so again, you get a nicer shape if I use the ruler. But there we go, we have the triangle and it has been inverted. Okay, um, moving on, our next question. Okay, so another way we can be asked is if we reflect shape D in the x axis. So this time they're actually instructing us to use the x-axis. So we've already been given our mirror lane, our mirror lane's there. It is the x-axis, okay, so x goes across the way. Uh, this lane, the axis itself, is our mirror lane. Now, 
This point here, for example, when it lies in the mirror line, that's our, refle our reflected point is therefore on the same point. All right, so the, sh the, the corner here on shape D is zero, uh, zero squares away, so the only way of doing that is then realizing that the reflected point is there also. Okay, so make that nice and big if that helps us remember it. Moving on, we'll reflect this point. It's one, two away, so we go one, two the opposite way, and just join up as we go. So the reflected shape and the original shape will actually touch each other. One, two, three, and then it's also one, two, three. Okay, join them up, and there we go. Inverted triangle, all right? Uh, the last type of example I'm going to look at you, uh, look at with this, is where we're doing a diagonal reflection. Okay, so we're asked to reflect shape E in the line Y equals X. So if you remember, Y equals X was this diagonal line here. So first off, we need to plot our mirror line. Okay, so one, one, two, two, three, three. That's the way that line would go. Um, I can continue down here as well, but I know from looking at it, I won't really need this space in the X, Y axis down here, all right? Now, one of the things I generally do to help me with the diagonal reflection, because it can be awkward, is I turn the page so that the mirror line is pointing away from me. Because remember, we always count perpendicular from the line. So like, I'm counting in that direction, okay? So if I look to reflect this point first off, this point, is one diagonal square away. So I have to go one diagonal square the opposite way. When you're doing diagonal reflections, what you also have to keep in mind is if I was to reflect this point, you can end up with half squares, okay? So this point here is half a diagonal square away, so I have to go in half a diagonal square the opposite direction, okay? So that's why I like to turn the page in that direction with the mirror line pointing away from me, so it's clear that I'm counting uh, and a direction perpendicular from the mirror line. The last point, okay, I'm sorry, just to keep a good practice, join the points up as we go. The last point I need to reflect is here. Um, so again, go one, two, you can draw a perpendicular line if that helps. I'm going one, two, two diagonal squares. So I'm going one, two, the other way, all right? Again, just join that up with the points I've already plotted, okay? So there is my triangle. Um, and I can tell by looking at that, uh, at that orientation that it is correct, okay? So just like anything, the best way to get better at these types of questions is lots of practice. Um, I'll put some practice questions at the end of the video for you to try. Um, anything else at all. Just let me know. I'll also look at a later video on how we describe reflections and our other transformations, but we will cover the transformations first so we know how to recognize each of them.